Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hopefully good. It was not going so good for me last night after the stream ended. Uh, so, as the title says... Uh, matter of fact, I don't even remember what I put in for the stream title. Oh well. So, we were shooting for the UFO ending of Silent Hill 1 yesterday. Uh, we got to the lighthouse, we used the uh, channeling stone at that location. It triggered some sort of cutscene where we saw some UFOs in the sky, but it didn't actually trigger the ending. Uh, with all of the googling that I could do, the only explanation would be that I missed a channeling stone location s at some place, but I don't know where. Uh, I swear I used the channeling stone on the elementary school roof. At, like, way earlier in the game. But I might not have done that either. Because I kind of remember going through the roof part really fast. Uh, it's the place where you put a little rubber ball in a hole and then you turn on a water tower drain and you can get a key. Blah blah blah. I might not have used the channeling stone there. Um, yeah. Even though I, sh I swear I did. Oh well. So I thought, hey, how about I just finish out that, the playthrough that I was currently doing, um, I'll be able to get the katana at really close to the beginning of the game, which is one of the best melee weapons for the game, uh, and it'll make the fights a lot easier, so I'm not going to be as stressed out trying to get through so I can get the UFO ending in the next playthrough. And then, no, you have to get the bad ending of the game to unlock the katana. <laughs> you have to not do the Kaufman side quest where he picks up a bottle of the red liquid aglophatis or whatever it's called. So... I sat for a little bit. I may or may not have cried. <laughs> uh. But then... I did what I always do when it comes to, like, a math problem that I am just absolutely stuck on. I took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I, I took a nap, woke up for after a couple hours, and I didn't feel soul crushed anymore. So I spent most of last night into this morning, setting up a different emulator for the game, specifically for PlayStation 1 games. Uh, but don't tell anyone that. Uh, and then... Well, actually, that's, that's the end of the story. That was it. So we're going to start a new playthrough, but, but, but... It's going to be on a better emulator. So hopefully you... <laughs> won't be bored out of your mind watching the same playthrough. Um, I'm also going to be lowering the difficulty just a tad. Because every time you replay the game, apparently it kicks the difficulty a notch up. Uh, and it's really stressful. Because <laughs> I think I want to play through this game at least, I don't know, four times. You'll see why. But yeah. So, that's that for Silent Hill. Uh, we will also talk about math stuff. Uh, as long as nobody has any questions, I have a topic to talk about. Um, it's going to be rehashing why 2 plus 2 is 4. But it'll also be talking about stuff beyond that. Like... How, why can you rearrange 
the order of numbers in an addition problem? Or why can you choose to add the last two numbers together first instead of the first two numbers together first? So we'll talk about that. Um, and again, if anybody has questions, just drop it in the chat. Absolutely free. It'd be nice if you were a follower, but that's not required either. Just put your question in the chat, make sure it's just not an actual quiz or test question, and then I'll help you as much as I can. And if you're not in a convenient time zone, and yet you're still catching this live, I have a Discord where you can go. I have a channel specifically for dropping math questions and physics questions. So you can jump into the Discord, drop down a question, I'll address it in the following stream, and then timestamp when I answer your question on the VOD that I upload on YouTube the following day. Uh, so that way, if you can't be here live, you can still have access to free tutoring. Uh, so hopefully that will work for some people. Um, so yeah. But without further ado, let's just hop, skip, and jump into my office. So let's go right now. Behold my beautiful transition. Wah! Look at that. Mmm. Lime green, like Gumby. Okay. Man. I think I need to change the soundtrack again. Uh, because, like, if it's a soundtrack that I absolutely adore for the background music, my ADHD brain will just lose the ability to talk. And that's why you'll hear me, like, say something, and then, in the middle of a sentence, I'll just pause. And then try to pick the sentence back up. Uh, yeah, so let me let me change it. It's still gonna be something enjoyable, but it's not gonna distract the heck out of me. One, uh, uh, one moment. One, one moment. Maybe two moments. But at least one moment. Uh... Mega Man. This one's gonna distract me, but I'm just gonna play it anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna play it anyway. I will turn the volume down just a little bit, though. Yeah, okay, there we go. So hopefully it's enough to, like, not have dead air. But at least I can hear myself think. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this is Mega Man X. It's the uh, first Mega Man for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And it's my favorite Mega Man. I love this game. Um, okay. Got everything set. Um, I'm just going to check to see who's here. Wait, Brandon, are you actually here? What's up, man? Cool. Um... Sorry, I hit my mic. That was kind of loud. Like this. Is that annoying you guys yet? Is it? Is it? Is it annoying you? Well, too bad. This is the best I can do. <laughs> okay. So, I had proved why two plus two is four, but I didn't necessarily describe why you can't just do something really simple. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So, improving 2 plus 2 is 4. You could prove it by just dropping down two things and then putting two more things next to it, and then literally counting how many things there are. So, there's one thing, there's two things, there's three things, and there are four things. So if you combine two things with two things, you get four things. So that's, I mean, that's like the most obvious way to prove 2 plus 2 is 4. 
mainly because we already understand that the definition of two is two of something. And we know how to picture that in our heads. Like, the dots that I drew, they don't represent really anything. It's just a thing, and I have two of them. So we know what that looks like, and also we understand that the number four is four things. We can visualize that, we can see it. And so when I draw two dots, and then I draw another two dots, we know that, oh, that's, that's four. But... There's another way to prove that 2 plus 2 is 4. But still isn't exactly the way that I did it. It's not necessarily as of formal of a proof. Uh, but it's also another, like, well, duh, kind of proof. Um, do you notice how the way that I said that we recognize that 2 is 2 of something? That I counted. 1, 2. And then, for the second pair of dots, I just kept counting. 3, 4. Well, we know that the number that represents one of something is the number one. It's just a dot, if you were using dots. And giving something one more dot, so that we now have two of something, is adding another one. And we know that if we give another dot, so if we add another one, we get the next number, three. So essentially, we understand that any number that we write down can be just a bunch of ones added all together. You just need to make sure that you have the same number of ones as you do the number. So there's one one, two ones, three ones, four ones, five ones. Okay. If we only had four ones, then this would not be a true statement. Five doesn't equal four ones. It equals five ones. So... We could take the 2s for 2 plus 2, and we could individually break them up into their number of 1s. So, 1 plus 1. Drop this plus sign down, plus, and then for this dude, break him into its constituent pieces. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 1s all being added together. And we know that, by definition, that is 4. So, if I were to write it more formally all in one line, I would write 2 plus 2 equals 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And that, by definition, is 4. And we could even take it another step by saying, well, we know 2 plus 2 is the same as 1 plus 3. If we just group together these 3 plus 1s. We know that when we add 1, that we move to the next highest number. So the number that comes right after 3, if you're using whole numbers, if you're using counting numbers, is 4. So these are all ways that you can prove that 2 plus 2 equals 4. But 
we're relying on the fact that we have already that we already understand like with pictures and counting uh that we can get two of something and then two more of something that ends up being one, two, three, four of something. But what if you're some alien society who hasn't figured out numbers or math yet? So you don't understand necessarily what the symbol plus means. Matter of fact, let's say you're a society that hasn't even learned how to count yet. If we remove all of the previous assumptions that we rely on for stuff... Also, I just realized I don't have my chat overlay, so I don't know if anyone has ever said anything yet. Okay, luckily no one's here, so I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me let me uh, pop open the uh, chat overlay so that I don't miss anybody who pops in, because that would be uh slightly embarrassing. Only slightly, though. I've already been embarrassed out, so. You can't really embarrass me any more than I am already embarrassed. Well, no, that's not, not that's not true. There's more that I <laughs> I have nothing to lose except a lot. <laughs> okay. Now, when I said imagine an alien civil uh, like society that doesn't know even how to count, that's not really a good starting point because a lot of just non-human animals are capable of counting up to, like, a certain number. Like, even certain types of insects have been shown to understand quantities. Like, they can understand the difference between one of something and three of something. They don't necessarily have an, abs uh, an abstract idea of the number one that's represented by a symbol. But, like, if they see one of something, they can recognize that's one of something. So, even in an alien society, will probably recognize what quantities are. But they might not have given symbols to these quantities yet. They might not even put together that... Amounts of things behave the same way. Like, the amount of sheep that you have, when you combine quantities of sheep together, acts the same way as amounts of patio chairs. If you have, like, different groups of patio chairs and you throw them together... If you have four sheep and then you combine it with a group of five sheep, you get nine sheep. Well, if you do this with patio chairs, if you get four patio chairs and you combine it with another group of five patio chairs, you get nine patio chairs. So let's say they haven't even discovered that notion yet, that a number is something more abstract than just saying a number of things. The first thing they would need to do is start defining what the heck a number is, like the abstract of I idea of a number. Uh, and the base foundation for numbers, like conceptually, at least in a subject called axiomatic set theory, from what I understand, is that the foundation of all numbers is nothing. Yep. Purposely stared in the camera for dramatic effect. <laughs> 
it's like, at least for us humans, we have an innate understanding of counting. We can count on our fingers. We were able to put dash marks or tally marks or whatever before we actually invented true symbols to represent a number. A quantity of things. But when you think about, like, conceptual numbers... The basis for them all is the idea of nothing. Or no thing. So, what I mean by that is like a bag, but the bag is empty. The bag doesn't have anything in it. It's an intellectual bag. So first we have to understand that nothing is a thing. That is the basis for all numbers beyond that. Nothing is a thing. Now, to give that a formal definition, we first talked about sets, which is a fun math way of saying lists, where the items on the list are distinguishable. Like, you wouldn't have a list that just said eggs, 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 eggs. You would just enter eggs on your list, and then go on to the next item that would be on your list. So, like, ketchup. That's what a set is. A set is a grouping of things, but they have to be distinguishable things. So, if I was making a list of colors, like visual, like visible light colors, I wouldn't list green more than once. Also, if I wanted to make a list of all the colors, I wouldn't leave out blue. Because then it wouldn't be a list of all the colors. So, a set is a list, and it has to have elements in it that are distinguishable. You don't want to double count things. Nothing, the idea of no thing, and able to make that a thing, is we have to define it as a set with no elements in it at all. Also, there's a phone call for you. It says Jeff Bezos. He has a job. For you? Sounds like he's offering you the vice presidentship... Blah, 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 blah. Vice presidentship of Amazon. Ah, oh, dang. You just you just missed him. He, he hung up. Sorry. How many kids with ADHD does it take to screw in a light bulb? <gasps> Do you want to go ride bikes? Yeah, that's... That's my brain. Okay. So to make the idea of nothing no thing... Also, I think I accidentally unscrewed my pen. My, uh, stylus. Oh. Matter of fact, I don't think the stylus even has screws. I just need to push it back in. Oopsies. Alright. To make the idea of nothing a thing... Uh-oh. I'm getting direct messages. Ha <laughs> ha! 
it's another. I'm getting messages from a person from the Neoners Discord that I talked to, uh, but she's but she's like actually apologizing, and it's like, no, you don't have to apologize. This is not like a formal lecture uh, stuff. I'm just talking to fill air until somebody has a question, and I'm just hoping that the thing that I talk about is slightly educational. <laughs> so yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so to make the concept of nothing a thing, we define it as a set that has no elements. It's a list with no entries on it. At all. Now, if that doesn't feel comfortable, a way that a math teacher explained it that I read was to say, okay, it does have quote-unquote elements inside it, a set of nothing. It's just that it's like the collection of numbers... It's the collection of... Let me make this definition a little more uh, precise. It's the X values... Where X is less than 8. And at the same time... time, x is bigger than 9. Is it possible for a number to be less than 8 and bigger than 9 at the same time? And the answer is no. Being bigger than 9, by definition, is being bigger than 8. Being less than 8 is, by definition, less than 9. So, there aren't any x values, any numbers that we could actually write down that would be smaller than 8 and bigger than 9. And yet... This set, the set of all x values where x is less than 8 and at the same time x is bigger than 9, exists. It's just that there's nothing inside that set. So another set that is a way to think about the concept of nothing is the set of all people who are alive and also dead. And not like if you think about fictional characters like undead or something. No, I mean who are biologically alive and also biologically dead. Another set would be the set of all light bulbs where they are on and also off at the same time. These are all sets that can encapsulate the idea of nothing, but make nothing into a something. So it's the collection of impossible things, which means you have no elements to list. So that's the basis of all numbers, is the list of nothing. Oops. There we go. File. No, don't save. Thank you. So we have a set, or a list, that is empty. So the empty set... A formal symbol for the empty set, besides just, like, 
a curly brackets with nothing in it would be a zero with a slash through it. We are going to just say that there is a symbol that isn't just a name, but like is a symbol that we can do stuff with that represents the set with nothing in it. And we're going to call that a number. And we're give it going to say that this is the number zero. So zero. So zero is a set that is empty. It's a list with nothing on it. It's a bag with nothing in it. Okay, so that's the basis of all numbers. So we're going really, like, scrapping all of human knowledge here. Like how this one philosopher named René Descartes famously did a thought experiment where he was like, what if I'm just a brain in a jar and everything that I've experienced so far is fake? Well... If I don't want to assume anything, then where do I have to start conceptually to help me find out what is actually real? And so he has to go to the very foundation of, well, I'm having thoughts. Therefore, and to have thoughts, you must have something that is capable of having thoughts. And since I'm the one having the thoughts... I exist. So even if you're just a brain in a jar, or just somebody in, like, some digital simulation, who's being fed a bunch of false and like, being fed the Matrix, you can at least go down and say, well, I'm having thoughts, I have to be a thinker then, so I must exist. Well, we're doing the same kind of thing, but with numbers. At base value, you can at least say that the notion of nothing is a thing. So that is like the the ba like the bare like the foundation of everything. Now that we have a thing, we can start doing things to this thing. So, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a function. You've probably heard that term before. You've probably heard of function notation or whatever. And even, like, types of functions, like straight lines, parabolas, uh, cubics, uh absolute value functions that look like v's and sine functions, cosine functions, etc. The most uh, layman's way, the most non-professional way to say what a function is, is it's doing something to something. So, like, we define that there is an object, and then we define that there's something that we can do to that object, and then we say this is what we can do to this object. So, like, a visual picture would be, there's a rock, I have hands, I can pick up the rock, and then throw it. So, this concept of zero that we've just defined a set with nothing in it, is a thing. Our function is like throwing the rock. We're going to do something to this thing. Now, what we do to it... We'll explain in a little bit. But the idea is that we're going right to the basics, and it's like, okay... All we know is that 
nothing is a thing. And now that once we have a thing, we can do stuff to that thing. Now, we haven't necessarily introduced the idea of counting. We just introduced the idea of making lists of things. There's a function that you can do to sets that was going to be helpful in helping us create all the numbers from the empty set, from zero. I don't even know if it's a function, but I know it's an it's called an operator. It's like how the plus sign or the division sign do something to stuff. What I'm going to talk about now is an operator. It operates on things. So, let's say I had a set, and it was the set of... I'm trying to think of things. The set of VTubers. Let's do that. Let's do that! Let's... So, not all VTubers, I'm not going to say it's the set of all VTubers, I'll just say it's a set of VTubers. So, like, let's say we have Callie from Hololive English. And then we have another uh, VTuber. Uh... Crap, I forgot her name. Pekora. So... Uh, Hollow Live Japan. So then you have Pekora. And then, just to round this out, you have Snuffy. So here's a set. It's a set of VTubers. I didn't say it's a set of all VTubers, I just said it's a set of VTubers. So it's just a list. You know, like how a grocery list doesn't have to list every single item in the grocery store. And as we said about the number zero, we could also have a grocery list that has nothing on it, but it's still a list. So, let's say we have a set, and I'll call it A, that stands for the set of these VTubers. And then let's say I have another list, another set of VTubers. Let's say this one has Nyaners. Uh, Kizuna AI... May, the only main reason why I'm thinking of is they have a concert coming up. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say that. And... Oh, shoot. Okay, Merryweather. Okay. Oh. That This is not going to illustrate my point unless I add one more person. So, Mary and... Ah, Lumi. Okay. So these are sets of VTubers. So they're lists of VTubers. It's like putting down two grocery lists. The operator I want to define is the union operator. So, union... Or the inclusive. Or. So what that does is it takes your two sets, your two lists. So let me write down all the names. Whoops, that's snuffy. So. Blah, blah, blah. Union, blah, blah, blah. Nyan, Kizna, Mary. I'm not going to write their full names because it's taking too long to write. <laughs> oh. And 
I didn't even redo what I wanted to redo. So, Mary, Lumi, and Snuffy. Now, I have... These are two separate lists, two separate sets. So, I can have Snuffy in more than one set. Or more than one list. Just like you can have two grocery lists, and on one grocery list it says that you need to buy eggs, and on the other grocery list it also says you need to buy eggs. That doesn't, like, invalidate the fact that they're both grocery lists. So it's the same thing with these sets. I can, when I'm grouping together distinct categories, as long as they're distinct in their own list, then we're fine. So the sets A and B, just because they have Snuffy in common, doesn't mean that they're no longer sets. Now, this is what the inclusive or, the union, this little U symbol I wrote down, does. So... It creates a brand new list. A brand new set. And essentially smashes together. It's like you take a cup, like if you're cooking, you take like baking soda and then you take a cup of flour and then you pour them both into a bowl. What this new set is, is it's going to be a collection of everything in set A along with everything in set B. So, Callie is in set A, so we'll definitely have to put her in this union set, this brand new set. Neon, we're going to have to put into this set, because she's in set B. This is why it's called an inclusive or. When you say something like, are you alive are they alive or are they dead? They're distinct things that don't have an overlap. But, like, if you have a condition, like, is the light green or yellow for a traffic light. You can have these two things that are different, but they both imply that you can go through the intersection with your car. So a good way of thinking of inclusive or or union is, like, if you make an if-then statement, like, well, if the light is green or yellow, go through the intersection. If not, stop. Well, if just because the light's green doesn't mean that you can't go to the intersection. I said that if it was green or yellow. And just because the light is yellow doesn't mean you can't go in the in through the intersection. I said green or yellow. So either element of their respective sets would satisfy my requirement. So just because Neon is not in both sets doesn't mean that I can't put her in the union. I have to. I have to list everybody that's in either set. So you got Neon, so then I'll just start throwing in everyone else. Peko and Mary Snuffy And I'm taking Snuffy from set A, the first one that I talked about. Uh, Kizuna and Lumi. And you might say, well, hey, Blair, did you write down the other Snuffy? Oh, and there should be another Snuffy in here. Uh, Snuffy. And the answer is... No, because as I said, in a set, you have to have distinct 
elements. You don't double list something. Once you've listed it, that's it. You don't write it again. So just because I had Snuffy in set A and set B doesn't mean that I write her down twice. So that's what a union is. You're, you're saying, well, what are all the things that are in one set or the other? They might have stuff in common, just don't double list what they have in common. So with the inclusive or, or the union symbol, we can take the number, the basis of all numbers, zero, and then create a function. We could do something to zero, and it's going to involve the union. So we're going to call this function s. And we're going to use function notation, just like how you would, like, write f of x is like, oh, x plus 2. So if you input a 7, then that 7 would also go here, plus 2. Okay, it's, it's function notation just like anything else. Erasing... Go away. We're going to call this function s of something. So, I don't know. I'll put a set in here. Just some generic set. This is what the function will do. It will take the set that we put inside it and it will perform the union with a set where A is an item on that set's list. So here's what this S function is essentially doing. We're taking a bag. So bag A. And then we're going to put it inside a new bag. So this is the bag S of A. So we're going to take our bag, and we're going to put it inside there. So our bag, S of A, would look like the green bag with the red bag inside it. Now, I wasn't exactly as careful in defining the successor function, this S function, spoilers, successor function, as I should have been. Because when I use a generic set, that's like a bag that might actually have stuff in it. So let me be more precise. A could be a bag with other stuff in it. So, like, let's say a, a bag A had a star in it, and it had a football in it. Okay. The set S of A would be a brand new bag that had the bag A 
inside of it, so this is bag A, it would have the bag A inside of it, and the bag A would s still have all its stuff. It would still have the star inside of it, and it would still have the football inside of it. But the bag S of A would also have the stuff, like duplicates of the stuff that was inside bag A. It would also have a star and a football inside it. So, the S function is more than just taking a bag that has stuff in it and then putting it inside a bigger bag. It's like a duplication cheat for a video game. You take, like, a chest that has loot in it, and you put it inside a bigger chest, and then next to the smaller chest, the contents of the smaller chest appear. So the bigger chest has the small chest and the contents of the small chest, and also the contents of the small chest. That's what this S function does. Okay. So that's being a little bit more careful about what this S function does. It takes a set and then performs the union operation with another set that has the set in it. So... Set A would be a bag. And the bag can have stuff in it, so our star and our football. It'll perform the union with another set. That just so happens to have set A and... Uh, set A's guts inside of it. And the set that results from all of this would be a set that has the set A with its guts but it also has A's guts and I just realized a way of thinking about what the success, the S of A is. So set A could be like a little bit smaller of a fish. So here's a fish. And let's say it ate a yellow fish and it ate a brown fish. So this is A. S of A would be a much larger fish. Wow, I'm the best artist in the world. <laughs> it would be a much larger fish that had eaten the red fish. Now, that red fish would still have the yellow fish and the brown fish inside it. 
but that yellowfish and red uh, brown fish were the only brown and yellow fish in the ocean. So the green fish ate the red fish that had the yellow and brown fish inside it. And then it ate another yellow fish and another brown fish. So that's what the S function does, essentially. It takes a set that's had a meal, and then it has it be eaten by a bigger set that also had the same meal. So there are a few different ways of thinking about what the function does. Now that I've essentially explained to death what this S function does, let's have it work on our concept of a list with nothing on it. Zero. Well, it would take zero, and then it would combine it with a set that had zero inside of it. Now, we said that zero was a set that was empty. It had nothing in it. So, just to keep things, like, color-coded. We'll say that zero is this blue bracket set. And we're combining it with some other set, some other list, that just so happens to have the empty set zero in it. Well, the set that we would get would have all the elements from our first set listed with all the elements of our second set. So, for our second set, we know that it has one element. It has one thing inside it. The empty set, or zero. But what about this first set? What about the set zero? Does zero have anything inside it? Does the set zero have any elements? Does a list with nothing on it have anything on it? No. So there is nothing to write down in here coming from the set zero. We don't have to write anything because there's nothing inside this list. While this list actually had something inside it. So, rewriting our set just a little bit more nicely. S of 0 would just be this. So, S of 0 would just be a set that actually has something inside it. So we started our numbers with the number zero, mainly being a list that had nothing on the list. Now we have another number. It's a list, but how many things are on this list? One. That's our number one. One is a list where the only thing on it is an empty list. So if I were using the fish analogy, the number one 
is like a fish that had eaten a fish with an empty stomach. So the green fish has something in its stomach. It ate something, but the red fish has an empty stomach. And then you ask yourself, well, how many fish, how, what, how many things are inside the green fish's stomach? One thing. How many things are inside the red fish's stomach? Nothing. Okay. Let's do the S function on our new number one. And let's see what happens. So. S of one. That would take the number one and then perform the union operation with a list that had one on it. So, what is one? Well, it's a list that has zero in it. So, unioned with a bigger list and this bigger list it contains the number one and what is the number one? It's a set that has zero inside it. So, here's the number one, union, with a list that happens to have the number one inside it. So then we could also write it like this. Union, one. So, our new list would be a list that had zero, because zero itself is a thing. Zero might not have anything inside it, but zero is a thing. So it is an element of the set one. And then this other set has one inside it. So that's what our S of 1 is. And if we were to draw that with the little squiggly brackets representing everything, it would be this much larger set where it had the set of nothing as one of its elements, as one of the items on that list. And it also had... I think I just used black parentheses for... Yeah. And it also has the list, where the only entry on that list is the list that has nothing in it. Now, with this new list, the union, well, the S of 1, how many elements does this guy have? 1, 2 elements. That means this is the number 2. So going back to our little drawing we had of numbers going in order, the number two would be the set that has zero and the set that contains zero. That's what two is. 
So if we use brackets but also numbers, then it would look like this. So you can imagine what the number 3 would be. It would be the S of 2. So it'd be a set that had 0 as one of its elements. It would have 1 as one of its elements. And it would have 2 as one of its elements. And again, how many elements are inside this set? 3. 4 would be when you have S of 3. So 4 would be a set where it had 0 in it, it had 1 in it, it had 2 in it, and it also had 3 in it. So this is S of 0. This guy is S of 1. So now you can probably see why I had accidentally called the S function the successor function. Our numbers have an order to them. Zero becomes before everyone else. But once we use the successor function, then we get somebody that comes after zero. One. And then we use the successor function on one, and then we get a number that comes after that. Two. If I use the successor function on zero, I don't get two, I get one. I can't skip ahead like that. And it doesn't go backwards either. If I use S on two, I don't get one or zero. So these numbers have an order. One is the first, zero is the first, one is the next, two is the one that comes after that, three is the one that comes after that, four is the one that comes after that. So essentially we have a list of numbers and we define them as things where we used our successor function on. Zero is when we used the successor function on zero, zero times. One is when we used the successor function on zero once. Two is when we had the successor function eat the successor of zero. Three is when we had a successor eat the successor of the successor of zero. Four is when we had the successor of the successor of the successor of the successor of zero. So them, you and you, you and you, you and you, etc., etc. So if you look at this, we have created all counting numbers, numbers that you can count on your fingers, just by recognizing that nothing is itself a thing and saying that once we have a thing, we can do something to it. So nothing is a thing, and then we can combine the list of nothing with a list that has nothing as one of its entries. And thus build up every single number after that. And you can see how zero is the foundation of all of these things. Because every number is really just a Russian doll of successor functions, and if you keep removing successor functions, you eventually get back to zero.
So another way to think about it is that the numbers represent how many times successor functions worked on zero. One is one S on zero. Three would be three S's on zero. So that's why I said zero was such a foundational, fundamental, like, core thing. Okay. Now... No. Instead of having to write you know, a fatter and fatter Russian doll. So, like, if I wanted to write the number 6, I would have to go S of S of S of S of... So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of 0. And then keeping track of my parentheses... So, that's the number six. That kind of sucks to write. So we can give a little notation uh, for how many successor functions operated on zero by putting a subscript. So, a successor function that ate the number is zero six times spits out the number six. Now, the successor function can operate on any number. That's how we go from, like, three to four. We take the successor of three, and that's how we get four. So, that means that the number five isn't just the successor of 4, it's also the double successor of 3. So we could say that the successor happening twice on 3 is the number 5, while the successor that happens once on 4 is also 5. So we now have some sort of subscript notation. That counts how many successor functions you had to do on that number until you got to that other number. Another useful thing... I don't know if I have to introduce this one useful thing yet, though. Hmm. Now, you can already guess that this notation that I introduced, where it's a successor function, but you're keeping track of how many successor functions you've used, and you're also taking note of the number you started with, is really just addition. And you'd be right! If I start at the number 3, and if I add 2, that is 5. We know that from just the math classes that all of us have already taken, because I'm assuming anybody who is watching this 
uh, either live or in a VOD, uh, is older than an elementary schooler. <laughs> and if you're an elementary schooler or younger, um, hello. Uh, hopefully your parents gave you permission to watch this. I'm... Yeah. This is mainly for, like, high schoolers and up, but, I mean, whatever. So you can already guess that this is addition. Now, the successor function, though, really only takes a number and moves it up by one until you get your desired le number. So, the idea of adding by 2, if we're using successor for notation, means we have to have the successor function operate twice. Which means it has to kick our number up by 1 twice. So, this is where we can introduce a quote-unquote new notation. Our successor function working on some number can also be represented in this new notation. It's that number plus one. And this is how we define what plus means. It means the subscript chilling out right there. So then if I wrote S of 2 of N, it would mean you would have your successor function operate once. But then it would happen again. And then... With these two numbers, using this definition up here, we can say that, well, we know that s of 1, if we follow this new terminology, would be 1 plus 1. And we also know that the successor function of 1 is defined as the number 2. So now we know that the number 2 can be represented with this plus sign notation. It's a 1 plus a 1, so we can replace that over here. So then, a successor function working twice on the number n would be the same as n plus 2. So now we have a notation that can look a lot more like what we're already familiar with. So, to make this ultimately generic, a successor function working k times on a number n would be the number n plus k. So, I think this is enough notation to really formally prove that 2 plus 2 is 4, and I've hopefully explained things a lot more clearly than I did the previous time. So, we have the number 2, and we have this plus sign notation that we've just barely defined. Looking at what we have written here, we see that we have an n. It's the number that's before the plus sign. We see that we have a k. It's the number after the plus sign. So, we know that we can write s of 2... C 
sub 2. Meaning it's the successor of the successor of 2. That's what the subscript notation means. So we know that this would be the successor this inside stuff is 3 by definition. And we know by definition the successor of 3 is 4. So, going all the way back Assuming that we don't even know what numbers are, we formally said that the concept of nothing is a thing, so that's when we define the number zero. We invented a function that could work on something, it takes a set and performs the union of that set with a set that has that set as an element. And by listing all of the numbers that we had written down, we realized that the successor takes you to the next number. So the successor of 0 is 1, the successor of 1 is 2. So we in created this plus sign notation. That's the number that S is eating, and this and this symbol represent what the successor function is going to spit out. And we then created notation to keep track of how many successors of a number we've done. And then using that plus sign notation that we invented, we were able to write down a very basic idea of addition. And in this case, this is where the order in which the symbols, the numbers appear, either in front or behind the plus sign, matter. Now, with the addition that we've been taught that we understand, we know that the order of the numbers that we write down don't matter. 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3, they're both 5. But if we're going by, like, a brand new system of math that, like, an, a society along, somewhere else is inventing, with the notation that they've created so far, the order that you write down your numbers actually matters. Because the first number is the number that will be inside the s function, the successor function, and the second number will be how many times the successor function eats or operates on the input number. So right here, we can't say... that n plus k and the k plus n mean the same thing. We don't know if that is the same thing. Because the first thing says it's k successors of n well, the other one says n successors of k. So meaning you have Okay, 
it. So I got that. I have these. I just need one more. So this would be K successors. Hers. While this would be of K, and then I can put that, and then one, two, three. This is N successors. What this is saying is you have your number line, and you have N, and then you do K successors. Is this going to put you at the same point as if you started at K and then you moved N successors? Are you going to end at the same place? And we don't know. At least for right now. With this notation that we have created, the notation for addition using just the fact that nothing is a thing and that we can do something once we have something. Using just those two m extremely basic ideas, we can create addition, and yet where you write your numbers, either in front or behind the plus sign, matters, because we don't know yet if n plus k is the same as k plus n. We don't know, say, if... Now, this is going to be an obvious... Well, I mean, yes, we know this is equal. But, like, we don't know that s of... s sub 2 of 3 equals s sub 3 of 2. We don't know if S S three equals S S S two. Boom, boom. Okay, so I have these guys, I have these guys, so I need one more. Cause we have different starting locations. And we have different numbers of advancing from that location. If you were to write down a list. Three. This guy is starting here and then moving twice. This guy is starting here and moving once, twice, three times. Do they give you the same ending location? Now, duh, yes they do. And that's actually a clue in how you can prove that this and this are actually the same. So that n plus k is the same as k plus n. So we've proven that 2 plus 2 is 4. But now we found that with addition, there's another thing that we've been taking for granted our whole lives, and it's the idea that you can take two numbers that are being added together and then swap the order in which they're being added. We've taken this for granted a lot. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about why you can do that. And it's going to be related to, you know, 
taking into account where you're starting from when you're using your successor functions and how many successor functions you do. You'll find that you'll always end up at the same place. So we'll do that more formally tomorrow. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead, uh, take a little bathroom break. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to start a brand new playthrough of Silent Hill. Uh, in this playthrough, we're going to get the bad plus ending. So we're going to save Sybil's life, but we're going to completely ignore the Dr. Kaufman quest. Um, I won't spoil what the bad plus ending is. Uh, that's just because I've already played through the game once, so you already know how the game ends. If it's the good plus, where we save Sybil and we save Dr. Kaufman. Well, we're only going to save one of them, Sybil. That'll let me get the katana in... Not the next playthrough, but the playthrough after that. So the first playthrough will be the one that gets the bad plus ending. That'll allow us to get the rock drill, which is a little bit better of a melee weapon. And then we can get the bullet adjust so that we get twice as many bullets. Uh, and then in that second playthrough, we'll get the good plus ending. That'll allow us to get the katana. And then we'll use that third playthrough to get our special UFO ending. And then we'll play it one more time. So that's four playthroughs. So we'll probably do five playthroughs because on the fifth playthrough, I think we'll have the most fun weapon in the game. So yeah. So let me go use the restroom. Um, I'll be back and then we'll just jump right into Silent Hill on a better emulator, by the way. So ho uh, hold on, I will return. Give me, you know, however long it takes to go to the bathroom and wash your hands. So, hey, feel free, feel free to even time me. Let's, let's, let's like, uh, you know, keep track of how long bathroom breaks take, you know, for fun, for funsies. Data collection. Okay, I'll be back. I promise. That's not my Be Right Back screen. Oopsies. This is.
Yo. Okay, I promised I'd be back. I even washed my hands. They're clean. Trust me. They're clean. You can you can smell them. Well, I mean, you could try. <laughs> but yeah, I'm back. Okay, I have to edit a window. So let me do that. Okay, I want you. Yes, there we go. All right, so this is the better emulator. We're going to be using this. Uh, so everybody hold on to your butts, because we're going to be starting a brand new playthrough. And uh, it should look nicer and work nicer. Uh, cross your fingers. <laughs> so... Let me get our lovely game started. Ah, sweet heavens. It's a wind it it's full screen windowed, so I could still see the chat overlay. But like the game is actually starting, so I'm Oh no, I just realized the volume's probably gonna be loud. Uh volume warning! Big time. Um. Oh! I can all tap. Alright, there. That should be better. Okay, back to the game. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, it bugged out. I guess I can't alt tab. Ah, uh, so I just have to be not dumb and remember to change the volume before I, you know, turn the game on. I am so incredibly sorry. Alright, file. Let's run this puppy. Okay, everybody's essentially seen the intro, or at least I'm going to assume everybody has. Um, I don't want YouTube to have to, like, silence, uh, or slice out more than they need to, so we'll, we'll just skip. And also, I don't need to keep talking, I'm just gonna shut up. Okay, so is everybody ready? Everybody ready? I'm ready. I'm not ready. Okay, don't judge me. Oh my gosh, EA was right. This does not dither half as much. Cheryl, where could you be? It's strange. It's quiet. Too quiet. This place is like a ghost town. You can say that again, Cheryl. Okay, yeah, this is already much better looking. Holy moly. Like, I had gotten it booted up and whatnot, um, last night? Okay, I didn't run out of breath. 
I had booted it up last night to make sure that it would work. Um, but I think I was like half asleep, so I couldn't really appreciate how much better it looks. So yeah, I'm actually really happy. Footsteps. Oh, and also, it's in widescreen. Cheryl? Which is weird. Is that Cheryl? I mean, could be. Where are you going? Hey, wait! Stop! Do I want to become famous? No. Not at all. I wonder how many other bot messages uh, this will reply. <laughs> Come back, you little... <laughs> oh. She moves pretty fast. Oh, oh my gosh, I just realized you can actually read the signs. Like, you could kind of read the signs. Uh, but now you can really read the signs. I like that. Wow. Beware of Doug. Is there a fire? Like a, an emergency siren. And also, why did someone butcher an animal on the ground? I wonder if I can make the squishy sounds. Yes, I can. Squishy squish. Oh, it's just so crisp and squashy. Okay. One thing that I noticed, too, that, like, pile of goo is a lot bigger than your seven-year-old daughter. So it's a good way of saying, well, something bad happened, but that's not her. Okay, I didn't even notice that detail. It changed from uh, snowing to raining. Because I don't think it snows in the other world. So that's... Okay, there are flies. Oh! Oh my gosh, you can actually tell it's a wheelchair. Uh, it's a broken wheelchair. What's this doing here? Also, why is its wheels uh, turning? I don't know. And there's a body. Yes! Brandon, you know what to do. Um, here, let's try to leave. Nope. We can't try to leave. Um... What's this? Um... It's a mannequin. Yes! What? Mr. Brandon. Tell me. 
Here, I'll even walk closer. Talk to me. What's going on? Side step. Side step. Turn. I can't. If I check DMs, I'm pretty sure it's going to break the game. Because I don't think I can alt tab. Do -de -do. And that's a lot of blood. Oh. Oh. What is this? What's going on here? Yeah, that's that's not pretty. Whoa! -ho -ho! Ah! <laughs> I want out! I no! I want out! I want out! Oh no! I went the wrong way. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, now I'm dead. Like, very dead. Was I dreaming? Oh, uh, a little feel? of this, a little of that. Oh, like I've been run over by a truck. But I'm all right, I guess. Glad to hear it. You from around here? Why don't you tell me what happened? Wait a second, I'm just a tourist. I came here for a vacation. What's up, EA? I just got here. I'll tell you after the cutscene. I don't know what happened. I'd like to find out myself. Uh huh. Have you seen a little girl? Just turned seven last month. Short, black hair. My daughter. Sorry. The only person I've seen in this town is you. Where is everybody? I'd tell you if I knew, believe me. But from what I can tell, something bizarre is going on. That's all I know. Hmm. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. The phones are all dead, and the radio too. I'm going back to call in some reinforcements. Hmm. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. It's dangerous out there. In that case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. I mean, you can. Have you got a gun? Uh, and then he flexes. No. I got these pythons. Take this and hope you don't have to use it. Now listen to me. Before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting. And don't do it unless you have to. And don't go blasting me by mistake. Well, that's it? foreshadowing. Yeah. 
Thanks. You do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. Okay. Um, I'm guessing something really bad is going on with the capture or something. So, let me put down a save, because I don't want to have to do all of this all over again. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to attempt to alt-pad. Alt-pad. Alt-tab. And hopefully it doesn't bork everything. Okay, so, what are you showing me? Ah... I thought Escape just shuts down the game, though. Oh... Really? Okay, so I hit Escape, uh... Huh. How do you hide... Because... It makes me wonder, what is being captured? Oh my gosh, I have an actual game capture that I'm using, and I'm an idiot. Uh... Window capture. Game capture. Oh, well, that's not good. Properties. So, how do I get back to the game? Do I just hit escape again? Obviously not. I just tried. Okay. Alright. Alright, 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 alright. So... File... Continue. Boom. Ah. Okay, but I can't tab back into it, though. Continue. So, like, okay, I can see it in OBS, but, like, how do I get back in it? Uh. Like. I'm not able to get back into the game. This sucks. <laughs> Literally all I can see is just that little rectangle that you can see on the screen. Like, it refuses to go back to full... Yeah, I hit continue. OBS captures a full screen image, but I can't actually get back to that full screen game. Okay, so answer your question, what do I think about this emulator? I hate it. It sucks. It's terrible. It was programmed atrociously. But for some reason, it plays the game better, but getting it set up is a nightmare. And having it actually do what you want it to do is a nightmare. But once you can finally get it to do what you want it to do, then it's like, oh, this is fantastic. But all of the in between time it sucks i hate it <laughs> um hey you've helped enough already like i'm still glad you told me about this emulator because it does look so much better so much better uh i just i wish that the <laughs> I wish that the dev team 
was especially better at documentation and actually uh, fixing bugs with this thing. Because they'll have, like, stupidly obvious bugs that they just won't fix for years. Like, going through all of the uh, help threads, like, the community has had to kind of help itself. Yeah. So, I don't understand what's happening. Like, why I can't get back in. Um, the little rectangle is game capture. But I was trying to use window capture... Well, that's what I was trying, but apparently it just stayed on the uh, EPSXE main window. So... Uh... Well, okay. So, close that. I am. <laughs> I've been in full screen this whole time. God, I hate this program so much. Really quit? Yes. Well, no, even if I don't have it captured, I cannot alt-tab the game. Because if I alt-tab the game, it just crashes. Like, it makes it so that I cannot get back into it. And I don't know why. Like what? How long is it? So yeah, don't alt tab. Can someone just enlighten me a little bit? Because I legit have no idea why. Um, I don't know. So I lost my train of thought. I lost it again. Um, and now there's a squirrel. Oh my god! Can someone just enlighten yeah. me a little bit? That's really good. No well, no, that's the thing. If I hit escape, and then I try to continue, it won't open the window again. Like, that won't work. It just doesn't work. And I have no idea why. Okay, so... Yeah! Really? I hate this, but I'm going to make it work. I swear by Thor, I am going to make this work. Um, okay, so... Booting up EPC, blah, 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 booting up the emulator, emulator, again. Okay. File, run the game. Okay. So please tell me. Is it just the game screen now with my avatar and the chat on top of the game screen? Okay. Okay. From here, though, once I hit continue, uh, I mean, once I hit escape or I try to alt-tab, then it crashes. So I just cannot... 
I have to treat this like an actual PS1, where there is no alt-tabbing or escaping. There is no save state. What do you mean? No, 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 I can't access anything, like, I can't move the mouse around and actually have the program show anything. It's literally like, I'm just looking at a TV screen. Like, it is not working how it's supposed to, but I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, well, I will try hitting... a key. That stalled stuff for a little bit. What about free slot? Frame limit. Ah, crap. Probably F two. Whoa, this is speeding. I hate this. I hate this so much. Hey, any any bit will be helpful. Hey, it's capturing my curb, sir, and I don't want it to. Yeah. But that's not PCS. That's a that's a different prog program. It's not made by the same people that did the P the hoo -hoo, the PlayStation 1 one though. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I will figure it out. I'll get this to run. Reset. Oh goody, now it's not accepting my controller. Oh, it just did. I didn't want to hit continue. Okay, well I didn't want to continue. Wait, so right now, is the game screen borked? Like, is it not covering the black background? Or does it look okay? Okay. Then I'm good. Um, I just didn't want to hit... You know what? I'm not even going for the good ending. I'm going for the bad plus. So, continue is fine. Are you sure it's not just a camera angle thing? It doesn't look too weird to me. Do-do-do. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, this looks stupidly better. And actually, it is even responding better to, like, the controls. It feels like there isn't input lag. So it feels nice, too. So yeah, no. Thank you for telling me about this. I would much rather use this than RetroArch. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Try to leave. What's that? Huh. Radio. 
What's going on with that radio? Nightmare. Alright. Yeah, we'll take a pocket radio. Alright. So, we're just gonna go zoom zoom through this game. Where could Cheryl have gone? I have no idea. I guess I'll check the alley again. Well, well, go back to your dinner party. <laughs> you're again. Thank you. Like it. It's enough that you're just watching. So, really, thank you. And have fun at the dinner party. That's actually really fun. And nope. We're just gonna ignore you. See ya. Matter of fact, we're going to ignore everything. Alright, man. Thank you, EA. Ooh. I need this. Where's the thingy? Ah, dog set. And a key. And a health drink. I'll happily take that. I think that's everything that's in here, so... Where am I? Oh, I'm not in the alley that I'm supposed to be. Oops. So turn right. And keep going. I think the convenience store has stuff. So I'm gonna run over there. Bye, dog! Uh. Uh. Oh, there's a... It's right here. Along with a bird! Dang it, my glasses keep falling down my nose. Okay, there's something here. I will take that, turn around. My god. Really, like... <laughs> it's a pain in the butt to set this thing up and operate it, but... Oh my gosh, it looks so much better. It really does. Okay. Health drink, thank you. And a first aid kit. And I believe that's everything that's here. Like, you can actually read the, like, the fact that it says 8 on all these signs. That's crazy. I like it. Wait. You know what? There's so much more detail, I can actually look here and see what the heck is going on. Okay. Alright. Throw a save. Okay. I don't really think there's going to be a whole lot, so I'm just going to run to the alley. Actually, no. Up on Bachman Road, there's another health drink, but there's also a few pterodactyls. So it's almost not even worth it to run up there just to get a health drink. Although... Where's my car? Where's my car? Got the health drink. Alright. So 
So I was at Buckman Road. Run, cross the street, and then hang a right. Sayonara. You silly birds. Okay. I'm pretty sure the dogs will respawn if I kill them here. So I'm just going to try to run around them. Woo! Shut up, Harry. I'm so mean to this poor guy. He's like, he's really trying his best. <laughs> it's like he's being toyed with by an, a, like a bully god that makes him run into walls. <sighs> hey, bullets. Yay. To school. Isn't this Cheryl's sketchbook? It is. Hmm. She's at the school. Pretty sure. Alright then. Here. Take the pipe. Cool. And let's marvel at the drawing. It's even more goofy. <laughs> I love it. This picture, it's me. Yes, because your eyeballs are protruding out the sides of your head. The first picture that Cheryl drew in the sketchbook that I gave her on her fifth birthday. Which also happens to be two years after Harry's wife died. Do do do. Okay, so there's going to be a dog now. I wonder if I can just run by him. I mean, I know it's a really compact space. Oh. There is no dog here. Thank you. Thank you, easy difficulty. <laughs> ah! Bye, dog. Okay. Since this isn't really going to be the really good ending, I don't really care about getting all the items. So I'm just gonna... Woo! Ow! Ha, ah, you missed. Uh, nope. Nothing there. Here, I say, I don't care about getting all the items, and then I actually painstakingly look at every porch. Alright. Now. I think I need to be up on the west side of Levin Street above Matheson. Because that's where the doghouse is. I need to go this way, because I think this is where the cop car is. It triggers the, hey, go to the doghouse thing. And I could also be completely wrong. And it turns out I am completely wrong. Eh, try to get me. Woohoo! Too fast for ya. Um, running in the 90s. Okay. Uh. Maybe the cop car is this way? Possibly? Uh. Ghoul. Stop? No. Go. Only go. 
only fast, no slow. Try to get me, you little... Woohoo! Ow. Alright, fine, I have to... Ah! Okay. So four hits is all I ought to do. You're dead, shut up. No one likes you. Oh. I absolutely had to go here. Cool. And since I let myself get hit, I should probably pick up the health drink. Oh, and my health looks pretty okay. I like that. Um, now, do I need to go north on Elroy? Yay or nay? I think I need to go south on south on Levin Street. Walking along, singing a song, and ha! Not gonna sing that. Do I need to go down that alley? Maybe. No, I think it's just a monster with nothing. Never mind. I lied again. And... Oh! Dang it! Shut up. Alright. Uh... How hurt. Wow. I'm not that hurt. Also, why the heck do I have 167 bullets? I have no bullet multiplier. Why do I have 167 bullets? Oh, because of the difficulty. Ver oh, I get it. I understand now. I feel like I'm being spoiled. Like, <laughs> Santa brought me, like, five times the bullets that I'm supposed to have? <laughs> and then I had a cry. Whee! I don't know why I missed... Why am I missing all those shots? Why am I missing? What in the Lord's name? Oh! Hey, what's up? And... are you dead? Yeah, you're dead. Um... Hey, are you dead? No, you're not dead. Alright. You're dead now, though. Alright. Wow. I also have, like... A million hit points. That's interesting. Okay. So, running, 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 running. Actually, since this is the easiest difficulty, this is probably the time to actually run around and look for all the items. Because I have an enormous amount of bullets and an enormous amount of hit points. I don't think picking up all the items gives me, like, a really good ending. Because I really want that katana. Also, I think I use the word really too much. Hey! Good night, sweet friends. Okay. Anything there? No. No. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna see anything there. Uh... Is this where the cop car is? No, it's not. But, this is also important. 
Doghouse. Levin Street. Awesome. And random papers. That's a window. That's not a flat wall. Okay. I think west on Finney is where the cop car is. So I'm going to run that way. Come here. Why did I miss... I don't understand. I don't get it. I really don't. Where's the... There's another dog. Come here. There you are. Hello. Why did that shot miss? I'm aiming right at him. Good night. Alright. My gosh, doing a new game playthrough and starting on easy difficulty is almost like turning on god mode. This feels so much l less... That's a sentence. It's, it's actually, like, relaxing. Like, I'm almost not even scared. Almost. Woo! Here. Eh. Oh, never mind. Okay, he's not coming back. Wait, nope. Here he comes. Turn around. And drop. And I kill him. I checked up here. Please tell me I didn't. Maybe I have to go all the way east on Finney Street to find the cop car. With the open truck. So let's do that. Okay, well that dog's just dead. Where are you? I hear you! Oh, there you are. Oh, well, now he is also dead. Wait, who's here? Aye! Okay, and then I will kiki. So I went kicky. Okay. Please be where the. Oh. Wow, that was a full uh, 360 rotation. And you're dead. Reload. Shut up. Suck it up, Harry. You're fine. More bullets. Key of the Lion. Do I have all the keys now? I should have three. I do. Okay. Very good. Got all the keys. And I actually think I have all the items now, too. how to get back to that house. I guess I go down this road, and then I take a right. Oh, hi! No, like actually step on him. There you go. 
be like a dummy mummy, just step on him. There you go. Channel your inner Lady Demestric... something. Something. Okay. So, wait, did I go down this street all the way? Yes, because if I hadn't, there wouldn't be that red X there. Alright, so... Wait, hold on. Okay, good. And I'm facing the correct way. Good, good, good. And just checking to see if I need to walk by any other place. Just a nice, pleasant little jog. <sighs> I'm so impatient, I have to keep checking the map, like, am I there yet? Am I there yet? Am I there yet? Wait, can I check this? Wait, no, these gates won't work. Okay. Who beest thou? <laughs> Wait. Oh. Alright. <laughs> right up the rectum. Okay. Gave him a prostate exam with my foot. Okay, and here's the doghouse. Awesome. Get the key. Fantastic. And up and into the house. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, turning around. Okay, now, this door will not open until the third playthrough. that. Um, I don't think there are any other items. TV's busted. Okay, more bullets. Thank you kindly. Uh, yep, health drink sitting right there. Nothing in the fridge. And also, when I said the word fridge, I suddenly felt very hungry, and that sucks. <laughs> and yeah, I feel pretty confident in saving. And I also feel really confident in leaving! Oh. I should probably take the map, though. Lion, Woodman, and Scarecrow. Those are Dorothy's companions in The Wizard of Oz, by the way. Oh. Well, I already got all the keys, so that little tidbit of information wasn't even needed. Oh, what? It's getting dark again. What's going on? I don't know. Like, even after you play this game several times, you still don't... <laughs> it's still hard to explain to somebody else, like, what is happening. Like, a uh, psychic cult ritual witch stuff. Okay. Come on, don't be scared. You have more bullets than Rambo. there. 
nothing down that alley. I have more bullets than Rambo, and I have more hit points than the Hulk. So... Wait. Really, everything should be scared of me. Instead of the other way around. Whoa, I didn't know that you would dip down. Look at that. Not it's not even like completely flat terrain. That's really cool. Doop, 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 doop. Pretty nifty. No trespassing. Pretty easy to do when there's nothing on the other side of the fence. Hey, there's a phone call for one of you guys. Someone gotta answer it? Hello? Anyone there? Like, the phone is ringing, are you gonna answer it? Yes or no? Well, it's too late now, they hung up. Oh, there you are. Come here, puppy puppy. Wait, is he... No, he's not dead. He is now, though. It was an act of mercy. Like, if you saw a dog walking around with no skin... Uh... Would you just let it suffer? No, you wouldn't. Because that would be monstrous. Alright. Uh. So I walked up the alley between Midwitch and Levin. This goes all the way down to the elementary school, which is fine. Okay, where are you? I thought I saw an item. I thought I saw an item and my greedy little hands were ready to grab it. Alright. Just checking this side of the road. I don't remember if there are any items down here or not. But probably just a good idea to... Ooh. What did I miss? Wait! Stop missing! Still 185 bullets, that's disgusting. Okay, I'm practically at the elementary school. So, we're gonna keep running this way, and then we're gonna hang around and check the other side of the street. Where are ya? Hey, like... Right. Good night, birdie. Scratch my face and scratch the mic. Sorry. Oh, dog. Yo, dog. Okay. Uh. Okay, so we're gonna go east on Block Street as far as we can first. Well, look at that. Block is blocked. Where'd he go? 
Are you coming back? Aww. Poor guy. Hey, Dougie. Oh. Oh my gosh, look at the detail. Okay, Tongue, slow down just a little bit so I can actually say a word. Look at the detail of this door. That's really, excuse me, that's really nice. Wow. All right, so there's nothing there. Okay. Uh, we're not gonna go up the alley just yet. We'll go on the north side of this road. See if there's anything here. Where are you? Oh. Okay. No, you do not get to leave. Okay, you get to leave. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was checking here. Okay. Now, did I check this side of the road of Midwich? No, I don't think I had. Just looking for items, making sure... Because again, this is like the best opportunity to actually get every item that I'll ever have. Yo, dog. I heard you like dying. Oh, that's a tree. And... Farewell to you. Now, checking porches, just to make sure that didn't miss anything. Nope. Um? Yeah, let's go ahead and loop through here. I want to go through that whole alley, north to south. Oh. oh, where? I hear you. Oh! Turn around. Hey, you... See, at the end of this playthrough is going to be so amazing. <laughs> Alright. And... So the south side of the street was fine. And it looks like the north side is also fine. Hit the ground. Oh my gosh, I'm literally letting the bodies hit the floor. I am metal. Hey, let's play fetch. Good boy. Good boy. Playing fetch. Play dead. Ah, oh, good boy. So well trained, the dogs in Silent Hill. Patios. Is that a dog or is that a bird? Oh, it's a dog. Okay. Come here, puppy. Good night. 
Oh. Fun fact. I don't kick my dogs, but like, if they're lying on the ground, I will pet them with my feet. You know, give a nice little scritch on the shoulder. And there's nothing there. Even my cats, too. They'll let me pet uh, them with their, my feet, too. I have weird pets. <laughs> Alright, so this is the alley we came from. We're just gonna go south on it instead of north. Okay, no, there's nothing there. And this is the only north-south alley. Let's keep going. Where are you? Oh, you're like right in front of my face. Oh. Okay, death. Good night. over here. Alright. Literally nothing. Okay. Now time to go between these buildings. Oh. Okay, turn around please. And I'll never get those bullets back ever again. Hey, there's a thing. Cool. Um, was there anything on the other side? Nope. Okay. But we found a thing! So our <laughs> running around the entire bloody map wasn't a complete waste. Okay. Okay, turn around. And good night. And there are bullets right in front of our faces. I like it. Thank you. Alright, so how many bullets do I have? 152? Not bad after, like, fighting everything in the town. So, I guess we'll make the L. Wait, no, we've already done the L here. Okay. So, we'll get back. We'll get back. We'll get back on Midwich. But we won't. We're still not going to the elementary school because I want to see if we can get to Bradbury Street. And then walk around that. Okay. Oh. Turn around. Oh wait, did he fall? Oh my gosh, he died. Wow. Um Okay, turn left. I think we went north, like we were on the east side of this road, except we went north, but I have the best memory in the world. Also, what's making the noise? Like is there a bird in a tree or on a roof? Because 
I'm not seeing anything. Okay, nothing on these patios. This neighborhood looks actually kind of nice, too. I really would... Like, if this place existed, I think it would be nice to go for a little stroll around it. Wouldn't you? You know. Take away the fact that it has skinless uh, dogs and pterodactyls all over the place. It's actually kind of pleasant. And there. Nothing. I think there might be a jump scare... around here somewhere. Because I remember walking past a tiny alley and a bird was just chilling right there, quiet, just standing. Oh! Oh, and because we're on this better emulator, we can actually read the signs. Do you see what that says? K. Gordon. We get a key called the K. Gordon key. If we had a good enough emulator, we would have been able to see the sign. Yeah, read it. K. Gordon. And we're going to walk up to the gate, we're going to touch it, and we're going to see that it's locked. Never mind, the game made me a liar. <laughs> uh, but the door inside the house is locked. At least it should be. If it isn't, then I I don't know what to believe anymore. It's locked. Good to know. Okay, so walking this way. So K okay, Gordon House. So, I'm just about at the end of this alleyway. And really, no items. That's fair. But it's it's cool to notice that, yes, you can actually see the sign and see that it says K-Gordon. I like that a lot. So this is as far east on Bradbury that we can go. Cool. Good to know. I wonder if we can even read this. Oh! So I definitely can see it says caution. I think the squiggly's a snake. So, caution, snakes. Never would have known that. I like it. Uh. Okay, yeah, right now it's just time to go to the elementary school. Um, there's a couple dogs, like right there. Come here! Get in an angle that I can actually see you. Dang it. There we go. And... Oh. Well, you're not dead. But now you are. But there should be another dog. Like, that's not the only one. Uh... Or is it? Well... In the bus we go. Wow, even in the bus it looks a lot better. Like a... Ah, I like it. Okay. Health drink? Yes. Health drink? Yes. Although the frame rate is really, like, having a hard time. Which is kind of funny. Okay. Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. 
here, so throw down a save. We are no longer in the doghouse, we are on the bus. Okay. Alright. So, back towards the school. There should be, like, dogs and stuff up here. Hello! Oh, two dogs. But I didn't trigger that one. Good night. Okay! In we go. Man, these interiors are so much nicer. And it's so much easier to notice that, oh, map! Quite good. Jolly good. Also, <laughs> I dare not alt-tab out of this. So if there is anyone there that's watching who's actually here for, like, math tutoring, I am absolutely still open for math tutoring. Like, I will turn the game off and then we can work. Uh, I'm just doing this mainly to keep myself from going insane waiting for people. <laughs> And also because, like, there are other people who actually like watching me play a game for demented reasons. And I love them dearly. Not the reasons, the people. But demented reasons are fun, too. Wow, and you could actually differentiate that... Wow, so... Oh no, I'm turning into Owen Wilson. Wow. 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 Like, you can actually even do the, like, eye test, kind of. Wow. Wow. More Ronaldo Gordon. This must be a list of teachers. And Gordon is there. So it would make sense that Gordon would have his key in the elementary school. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay. Written in blood. Ten. Alchemy laboratory. Oh, yeah, we've, we've done this puzzle. We know what to do. Darkness that brings the choking heat. Noon, a place with songs and sound. Or midnight. It doesn't really specify AM, PM. And this is localized for the United States. So it's not on 24 hour time either. Look at that beautiful. You can actually tell that it's supposed to be a, like a painting or a photo here. That's really good. Picture of a door. I don't know wh uh, who drew it, but it certainly is in bad taste. <coughs> Alright, is there anything? Oh! Look at the book! Hey, I have hiccups now. Look at that box of bullets. It's it's not just a red smudge. I like it. Okay. Locking. I really want to save again because I realized uh I don't think I can make a save state and not crash the game, so... Alright, 
So we got that. This right door, I'm pretty sure is actually busted or locked. Yep, locked. This other door probably opens, but I don't know for sure. Okay. But I know that this one definitely opens because it leads to the courtyard and that's where the clock is. Come here, little kitty! Actually, this is also a good time to practice melee. Come here. Lie down. Punk. Okay. Uh, the tower door is locked. Let's look at the clock. Stopped at 10. Nice. I think that's everything there. There's gonna be more monsters. Hey, come here, kid. Oh, you son of a gun! No. Oh, no! Okay, I got cocky. I'm sorry. Good night. Reload. 115, yeah, like, I can just use the pistol for, like, almost the entire game. Can I use this door? I can. But it's a little baby ghost of Alessa. At least that's what I think it is, anyway. And then we're gonna accidentally spook her, and that sucks. Because she's important. Like, look, she falls over, it's... You feel like a monster. That's like, I'm sorry. I really don't mean to scare you. Jammed. I... I'm just gonna try this door. It's locked. Okay, uh... This way, then! For some reason, I don't hear any monsters. Don't trust it, though. Oh. What about this door? No. What about this one? Oh. What about... This one! sure the bathroom's open. Yes, they do. I think that's the only one in here. Yep. Sorry, kid. Nothing personal. This bathroom act... Man! This bathroom's a lot cleaner than I thought it was when I first played this. It's actually kind of nice. You know, like, if this was a gas station and I walked into this bathroom, I'd actually be willing to poop in here. You know, it'd be like, you know what? The toilet seats in here are probably clean enough that I don't even have to wipe them off uh, with toilet paper before I sit down. Like, this is a safe pooping area. I mean, besides the demon child that is now dead. <laughs> Next bathroom! Okay. <laughs> Nothing... And I'm doing that old... RPG... Uh, technique of rubbing against walls and... spamming the interact button to see if something happens. And nothing happened. Cool. 
At least now we can unlock the door to the reception. So we're gonna do that. And I don't want to get cocky, so I will also save. Monsters didn't respawn, so that's nice. Cool. Man, it's only been 56 minutes and we're already this far in. I like it. Now, will there be monsters? No. Okay, so time to go to the second floor. Yeah, that doesn't uh, lead anywhere. A friend in need. Come in! Ooh, what is it? Okay guys, um, I'm definitely going to be ending the stream at 7, my time, <laughs> because the dinner is delicious. I mean, even if it wasn't delicious, but it's always going to be delicious because it's my mom that makes it, and she's a very good cook. That is an interesting drawing. That's the first place I look. Oh! Hey, I shot you? Wait, no, don't get back up? No. I did not tell you to get back up. That's right, you stay down there and think about what you did. That's a lot of blood. We're just gonna we're just we're, we're just gonna walk away. Oh, I'm actually injured. But not anymore. <laughs> hey. Life sucks, I know, I'm sorry. It it makes you want to give Alessa just a giant hug. Like, just how bad her life was? Fight me. Penguin! Okay. You? And a giraffe. Look at that. It's another penguin! Who are you? I am me. Wait, what the? Because knowing this game, they probably, like, put sneaky little images of maybe even the end boss. That's not a disturbing picture of a bunny at all. Or a cat. Teacher's desk, American flag, literally nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. So, let's go through this door. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a fight. Yep! <laughs> I love how I can't see them. Alright. Pretty sure three bullets are enough to drop the kid. And that sounded really bad. Don't, don't shoot kids. Now that definitely is a crucifix, with people climbing up it. Which would be your first indication that there's something not exactly right going on with the school. Like, even if it wasn't trapped in the hell dimension. And 
any disturbing imagery anywhere else? No. Just that health drink. Alright, I'm good with that. Alright, so it's either to the North Hall or the South Hall, and since I'm right next to the North Hall, we're going to the... we are going to go to the North Hall. Also, this is the stairs to the third floor, and the third floor is just the roof. And it won't open until we get to the other hospital. And when I say other hospital, I meant other school. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Ooh. Distilled water. And the camera is subtly telling you, look at that purple bottle. Sure. There's a chemical. Take it. Gladly. Is there anything else in here? Glucose. No reason to take that. Alright. Okay, so lab equipment, we're good. Can I get out? There we go. Now it spawns monsters. There you go. Why am I... why did I miss... I bet you these pink cabinets were catching the, like, bullet trajectory. But since they're not actually there, you're not getting, like, a contact, uh, sound of bullet against wall. Or some, like, design, programming, whatever. I don't... I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. Nothing useful. Yep. These... yeah, okay. These lab table... Lab tables. These lab tables actually look like lab tables. It... Man. That's actually really cool. More handgun bullets. And yes, I see the old man's hand. I just want to make sure I'm not missing out on anything else. No. So we'll take a look at the hand. Statue of an old man's hand. Fish is shut tight. Fish is shut. Fist is shut tight as if never to let go. Unless you dissolve it with hydrochloric acid. Concentrated hydrochloric acid. Yes. Science is fun. All right. Take the gold medallion. Oh. Okay. Kid surprised me. Wait, hold on. Okay, good. I did not actually walk past a door. Is this locked? No, it's not. Hey, come here, kid. I have no idea why I missed all those shots. Please don't say Among Us. Please don't say Among Us. Please don't say Among Us. No. Okay, what about this door? Oh. I did not intend to go here. Okay. Oh, wait, no, this is where a bunch of little babies are. Yeah, I'm really sorry.
Columbus. Thank you. Chicago? There's a monster over here, so I'm going to shoot him. Come, hey, come. Harry! Monster! Thank you. Alright. Nothing of use in here. What does that say? Whoops. A blank came from... Came to my... From... Yeah, I can't read that. And it's not because I can't read. Don't say that. Okay. Walking this way. Now, is that the ghost baby? Or is that another, like, actually corporeal monster child? Oh, yeah. And again, shooting kids is not okay. I do not condone it at all. Alright, what about this door? Crap. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's one. I know there's another one, but I don't see it. And I don't like that. Oh, you're right there! Alright. Why, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Uh. No, nothing really else. Okay, so we're gonna go into this classroom. Which is eerily silent. Uh, does it even have items? No, it doesn't. Are there any subtle hints of anything in here as well? No? I mean, there's a crucifix hanging up up there, so again... Chicago News. Why Chicago? Okay, that's just a little kid. Alright, so... bottom hallway? Although... Might as well go through the bottom hallway, because the locker room is there, and we'll trigger a silly jump scare. Okay, why did I miss? Why am I missing? That's ridiculous. Infuriating. I even tried this door. Yeah. Music room, I know what that is. It's where the piano is. I'm gonna try the locker room first. Locker room, I know a cat's gonna pop out of it. And then the cat's gonna get eaten. No running or playing in the locker. Shut up, I can do what I want. <laughs> Nothing useful in the... really bad though because I love cats and this cat gets munched. Which is not fair. Nothing inside. Um 
Whoa, what did I do? Um, I don't know what combo of buttons I pushed, but it triggered something normal. Oh, you can actually see into the courtyard! Oh, ho, ho! Look at that! Oh, and the courtyard has a roof on it. I didn't know that either. That's really cool. Okay. Now, the piano should be shut because this is where we get the silver medallion. We already have this poem, and we've solved it, like, three times. Uh, I don't think there are ever any, like, item items in here. So yeah. Hopping out. Now we will check this door to see if it works. What? Oh, I guess I should have tried it when I first was here. We're gonna go this way. Okay. <coughs> cool. That's just a little baby. Let's actually take the uh, these stairs because this will take us to a part of the first floor that we didn't have access to. So down we go. And... Alright, no monster there. Definitely monsters that way. I see you. I love you. One more shot. There we go. And have to finish the bloodline, so that's the way I had to kill you. Alright. And for you... Why did I miss? Good night. Good, we can actually unlock this door. That's nice. Um, we can go into the hall. Never mind, that is completely blocked. What about this classroom? Where are you? Nope. That's actually just the little kid. Which is sad. And now my silly brain is like, oh, that's probably because this is Alessa's classroom. Alright. Hi. The little kids. Alright. Nothing useful in this door. There's never... Hmm. Now, I'm pretty sure there are bad kids in here. Oh. Nope. There's just nothing. Alright. Huh. Hey, it's Silvervale! Or Lumi. Unlock this door. Cool. Um, now there are the stairs to the basement. Um, this is where the furnace is. Yep, but I can't turn this on yet. The light will be glowing red when I can actually interact with it. Okay, so yeah, nothing to do here. No monsters. What about this door? Nope. Just doesn't work at all. Alright. But at least we have it checked out on the map. Okay. Checking 
the time. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to save. And really, with how much of a pain in the butt the Zamia later is to work with, I can't argue with the results. The picture quality is... Mwah. It's fantastic. You know, RetroArch is nice uh, because it just works, but it's not pretty. Uh, this emulator uh, is nice because it's pretty. So yeah, thank you EA for telling me about it, because it's actually... This has actually been a much more enjoyable experience. I actually really like it. Uh... But yeah, uh, I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, oh, what's up, Hunted? You know what? Well, actually, no, because I shut the program down and it's not going to boot back up. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm going to call it here. Thank you, everybody, for hopping by, collecting these emoji things and other streams. Ooh. Well, you can essentially turn this chat into, like, a museum. So, like, whatever you collect, you can bring back and just throw down. Haha! <laughs> Um, I forgot, I actually have a goodbye screen, so let's go there. Okay. So, thank you everybody for hopping by. Um, it was actually worth all the frustration <laughs> of setting up uh, this current emulator. I like it a lot. Um, just to reiterate, yes, this is a free math tutor channel, um, so come on in, ask your questions, and I'll do my best to help you with them. I have a VOD channel, uh, well, first I should say, I have a Discord, so you can go in, I have channels specifically for math and physics where you can ask a question about math or physics, and then on the following stream, I can answer those questions. And then on the VOD channel that I have on YouTube, uh, I can timestamp, like what Hunter suggested. Not Hunter, Hunted. <laughs> I can timestamp uh, when I've asked... when I've answered your question, uh, so then you can just jump right to that. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's been a good stream today. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And let's have some more fun. Bye.